Well, hello, everybody, and this is our chance to say welcome to the city of gastronomy. Tucson, Arizona has a legacy, a history, and tradition of some of the most important culinary traditions in the world, recognized by UNESCO as a city of gastronomy, not merely because we have extraordinary restaurants and food service, such as the Coronet. We're going to be speaking to their founder and owner, Sally Kane, today. But it's also because we have 4,000 years of continuous cultivation of food. And it's in this tradition of history, legacy, and the future that we find ourselves mid-pandemic opining about the future. And so it is the chamber who recognizes that we are who we are today because of where we come from, but where we're going next is also equally important. And where we go next is we hope dining out with some of the most legendary restaurateurs in the country who are all operating and incorporating very important steps to secure your safety and health and well-being, as well as that of their staff and their communities. This is an urge to dine out, dine local, and under the banner from our friends here at the Tucson Chamber, we are saying, please, above all else, let's keep Tucson cooking. The launch of Keep Tucson Cooking is an exciting moment because it allows us to imagine that we have crested past the worst and are soaring into the food future that we share. But to make sure that the restaurants that we know and love and have known and love, the legacy restaurants, the historical places, the new places, and the future of our food community depends on all of us coming together and dining out. From her blog, Food Steps, to her work as one of the legendary legacy restaurateurs in our community. Sally Kane joins us for this inaugural conversation about how we all have to come together to keep Tucson cooking. Sally, how are you, my friend? I'm well, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to our food community. I want to talk about the Cornet because the Cornet itself, formerly Cushing Street, is a legacy location. You're yeah. a legacy operator and restaurateur. What an incredible uh, alignment of two of Tucson's most rich traditions. Uh, would you talk a little bit about not only where you come from, but of your world as the Cornet now defines it? Um. So I, I started the Coronet in a different location um, just over seven years ago on the corner of 4th and 9th. I have always absolutely loved Cushing Street and frequented Cushing Street um, as a neighbor. I live in the neighborhood a couple blocks away. Uh, it is, in my opinion, the most gorgeous historic building restaurant patio that, that Tucson has. And I had the opportunity to be able to move into there, uh, I guess about a year and a half ago. And uh, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that we got to pick up the mantle and steward that property. Uh, it has been a restaurant for and bar over 50 years. Uh, it has been lovingly cared for by the Rawlings family. And it was just time for uh, them to step away and for someone else to be able to have the opportunity to keep that property for the community. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a series of row houses um, and old family home. It was, the main room was a grain store and the furnishings are from the mid 1800s, most of them through the early part of the century. And it's just gorgeous. And we're, we're so proud to be there. What, it is one of the most remarkable and unmistakable places in town because when you walk in, you really know and feel like you're in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very, very special. And um, uh, it originally opened and was run uh, by Kelly Rawlings and uh, and owned and managed by his son Don. And Don has so many amazing stories. When there weren't even bar stools at the bar, so it was really a step up and put your foot on the rail kind of downtown. Rail, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it has a, a rich, long history. But so do you and your family. 
as operators in town. And it's really important that as our first guest in this series, that we remind people about, about how important not only the hospitality industry is in Tucson, in our economy, but it is an equally important aspect of our culture. Absolutely. I, I would ask, tell everybody if, if they're relatively new to town or if they're a, a legacy uh, Tucsonan uh, about where you personally come from and your family's history in the hospitality industry. So I am definitely of a, of a legacy family, although I, it is, it is not, it is my honor to be a part of it, but it wasn't, it wasn't my hard work. I was fortunate enough to be, to be born into that legacy, but my father um, and uh, his family started the tack room at Rancho Del Rio. And that was a five-star for many, many years, uh, continental cuisine. It was one of the most beautiful properties. It's, it's now uh, the property has been changed and the, the, the tack room is no longer there, but it was gorgeous with panoramic views of the Catalinas. Uh, it was the, it was the place where all the movie stars hung out when they would shoot movies at Old Tucson. Um, it was a place for special occasions, for anniversaries, and uh, poignant birthdays. It was elegant, and I remember being there all the time when I was a kid and really marveling at what. Uh, good service was. Uh, it was impeccable. And I'm fortunate enough to have letters uh, from my father that he wrote to his mother uh, in the years preceding uh, them moving out to Tucson and opening the tack room that are just filled every page of his travels through Europe and every meal he had. And um, the decor, the clothing he was wearing, the wine he was drinking, uh, the food on plate, every detail. So I, I cherish that. I cherish uh, the memory that Tucsonans have of him and the incredible restaurant he created. That speaks importantly to how important the hospitality industry has always been to the culture of this community and how important the restaurants are as public spaces, as gathering places, uh, where we celebrate our happy times and our milestones. Would you from your unique perspective and your expert perspective, talk about how important restaurants are for the Tucson community, for our economy, for our culture. Absolutely. Um, to me, to me, restaurants are the fabric of any community. So, so it is. It's hard to imagine any community or Tucson without the places that we celebrate. We celebrate. Our families, we celebrate our friendships, uh, we celebrate our romance. Uh, it's not that this can't be done in other ways, but traditionally as humans, we love to gather in public and we love to eat and drink and places, food, drink, they, they inform us of our memories and our senses. And I get really, or I have at times during this pandemic, really freaked out about our losses and um, it's, it's as if, uh, the fabric is getting holes in it and I, it concerns me. And so that's why I started food steps is I thought, what can I do to help people visit places? They might not be in their, their immediate world, uh, with the pandemic, everyone's staying close to home or maybe getting takeout from one or two places. And I thought, what can I do to make sure that the places that have been here or the new places that have come in really right before or even during the pandemic, uh, where people are putting their heart and their energy and their soul, which feeds back into us as the guests, how do we keep them here for for the future so that we have a community, so that we have places um, that speak to our memories. I uh, have to talk uh, about the fact that you have so articulately explained how food uh, connects people, especially in Tucson, Arizona. Um, why do you think it's so important to keep Tucson cooking? It's 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 as important for us as anywhere else. The 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 heart of 
every town and every city is the people who put their their love and their sweat and their energy into creating what makes that town. It's the artists, it's the musicians, it's the restaurateurs, it's the chefs, um, it's uh, the people who come and celebrate and partake or just in this point in time feel socially human in a way um, to engage uh, with others. And there are safe ways to do it, I think. And I've tried to create a space at least with us where people can get out of the house and listen to music. And even though we're all enjoying cooking for ourselves and we've all become better cooks in our own homes and, uh, you know, uh, found ways to, to enrich our lives at home, there's still this really primal need to leave the house and be a part of our communities. Keeping Kusan cooking keeps all of us engaged with our community. You're describing conviviality to a T as it's practiced here in Tucson, Arizona. How do you think the um, the Chamber's Tucson Restaurant Advisory Council or the Tucson Metro Chamber have particularly helped restaurants and our restaurant industry? I can only speak for myself. Um, I'm a new member, but what's been very valuable to me is the amount of communication I get from the Chamber uh, uh, more, uh, it's weekly, but it's often multiple times a week on what programs there might be for us, ways to help our staff, ways to access the vaccine, if there's any funds available for patio expansion, uh, connecting with other business leaders, uh, connecting with our officials so that our voices can be heard. So they're completely invaluable in every way for staying healthy and staying connected. And let's talk about the information coming in both directions. There have been so many changes in the regulations at every jurisdictional level. I can only imagine how essential it is to have a clearinghouse like the chamber to help you stay connected to updating all those bits of information and regulations as they come down. That's absolutely true, yes. And uh, it goes both ways. So they listen to us as well about where where we're feeling the need as well. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about your flavor philosophy and how you bring the flavor of Tucson to life. And is there any one dish from the Coronet that you think really expresses where you are, who we are as a cuisine culture, and, and what you hope people come to learn to know what Tucson's restaurant community is all about? Is there one spice or flavor or dish that is essential to having that as uh, interpreted by the coronet? So the coronet's a, a funny little, a funny little uh, restaurant in the sense that um, we've always just been complete gourmands. We like to put a lot of different food in our mouth with a lot of different influences. So we don't have regionally specific food, but we do celebrate the seasons. We celebrate our local farmers. We um, we pay attention to uh, what and everything we can get locally as well as sustainably sourcing all of our proteins. So, you know, there will be times that we might highlight um, an ancient grain that's local or uh, something like that, but we have a, a fairly eclectic uh, menu. And so, um, there's a lot of celebration of, of food from all over the world. A lot of Middle Eastern food, a lot of Spanish, Portuguese, Mexican, sometimes Asian, um, Baltic areas. And so, I mean, I could speak to a dish I ate last night that I love. Um, our salmon is incredible. It has Moroccan spices on it. So we're looking at, um, you know, cinnamon, cumin, uh, like a ras al like but homemade. Exactly. Ras al meaning top of the shelf or uh, a kind of melange of spices. Um, it has, um, candied orange. It's on a, a bed of, uh, roasted radicchio, um, beldy olives and this 
beautiful amount of herbs of dill and mint on top. And there's, it's, it's just gorgeous. And it pairs so beautifully with the vegetable couscous we have right now. Everything's small plates right now. So you kind of can mix and match all the small plates. You can do lots of little ones or create entrees uh, as I did last evening. And then the couscous in the traditional Moroccan fashion, it's so different. It's uh, steamed three times. Uh, with oil. So it's this really light, fluffy thing and amazingly flavored. So that's what I've been eating lately at the restaurant. Although uh, I could speak to many of our dishes right now. I'm so proud of our chef, uh, Tanner Fleming, and um, I just love our menu and it's continually changing. One of the things about COVID is it's single use. So we can change the menu constantly because we're not printing expensive or bound things. I'm printing them literally every day because we have to not reuse those things right now. It's just one of one of the aspects of COVID, but that gives us the freedom at the same time to change the wine list, to change the drink list, and to change the, the food menu. And I know that there are other changes that may happen from time to time as regulations shift. We're all in this period of impermanence. But for the time being, can you just remind everybody where the Coronet is located and what your current hours are? You do sure. wonderful takeout and we encourage everyone to yes. dine out locally, dine out locally wherever you dine. But please, if you can't go to a restaurant and I will urge you to know that all of my operator friends are absolutely living above and beyond the standard which is being asked of them. I trust my restaurant friends more than I trust the grocery stores I've gone to. I have to tell you, they really and truly are the places that are the most reliable. And the idea to keep Tucson cooking is essential because they are in fact doing such an extraordinary job. Sally, I'm gonna give you the last word. Um, tell everybody about uh, where the Coronet is, what your hours are right now, and uh, where your menus can be found online. Thank you. So. Uh... The official address for the Coronet is 198 West Cushing Street. However, that door we are not using right now. That is the main door into the main dining room. And we are only doing outside dining at this time. So we've expanded our patio space. We have three gorgeous patios. Uh, we have, I think, 30 or 40 heaters. So when it's cold, I mean, it's a blaze. It's, it's kind of nuts. It's really comfortable. And we will have uh, an, uh, a bevy of umbrellas as the weather turns. But now you enter either um, on Meyer, I believe it's 353 South Meyer Avenue. There's a gate onto Meyer Avenue. Um, and then if you park in our parking lot, there's also a gate in from the parking lot, two ways to enter the courtyards. We're open Wednesday through Sunday for breakfast and lunch, and Thursday through Sunday for snacks and sips, which is our happy hour time and dinner. Um, there's music Thursdays through Sundays, and um, reservations are recommended at night. It's counter service during the day. The tables are about eight to 12 feet apart. Um, we are vigilant in our protocols and uh, we all test weekly before we come into work. And so we're just, we're just working very hard to make sure that we're keeping ourselves safe because in my world, if my staff is safe, then my guests are safe. And I, that's why we're only doing outdoor dining right now is I need to feel comfortable working the way we're working to make sure we can keep everybody around us healthy. And we should tell everybody that the Cornet is practicing the highest standards of safety and no one comes to work without a negative COVID test. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely, that is correct. And I wanna say one last thing, um, please just help us launch and think about how important the program Keep Tucson Cooking uh, really is and how important it's going to be for everyone to do their civic duty for which we will all be rewarded with the dividends of our favorite places staying open following this period of time. Can you give me a sense of how important Keep Tucson Cooking is to you? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because as you and I were speaking about uh, before we went live, 
into, into the internet world. Um, I was talking about why I started the blog and, and to me, it's so important. It's important that the fabric of our community doesn't fade away, that we find ways to change our habits and spend our dollars locally so that we can help all of these small businesses that are family businesses that people have worked so hard to, to, to grow and to maintain and they provide jobs in our community. There's, there is every, every reason to only spend our dollars locally and the shops are suffering, retail suffering um, and restaurants are suffering. And even with everyone's best effort forward, without support, we go under. And no one is, no one is, as we've seen, we've lost giants, we've lost staples of our community. And I find it heartbreaking. And I just want everyone to do as much as they can with they're not comfortable dining out, getting takeout, buying gift cards for the future, just investing in what makes our culture valuable. It's essential and the support of the chamber is essential and the Keep Tucson Cooking Program is going to be some essential support that we Absolutely. really have uh, to Thank have the opportunity. Excuse me? Thank you so much for starting Keep Tucson Cooking and for, for creating a platform for restaurateurs and chefs and cooks and pastry chefs and bakers to uh, find a way to uh, intertwine with our community and stay connected. Well, Jonathan, uh, our engineer, I'm gonna have you do a one shot of Sally Kane, please. And Sally, I'm gonna have you look right in the camera and urge everyone who's with us today. I don't even know where my camera is, where is it? <laughs> and you, perfect, I love that. That's my Sally Kane smile that I love. Just keep Tucson cooking. Keep Tucson cooking. I'm going to have you do one more of those where you say, I'm Sally Kane, please. All right. Um, and of the coronet, obviously. I'm Sally Kane from the coronet. Keep Tucson cooking. Sally, thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Have a beautiful day.